Welcome to the Talk About Topeka Studios. We're here and we're ready for another great show. We've got Frank in the booth. Frank, how are you doing? Hi, everyone. I'm good. 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 Well, glad to have you in there. Okay, so we have a an article I saw actually. Downtown Topeka Incorporated shared it on their Facebook earlier uh, this week, and I thought it was really cool. Um, it was 21 things you need to know about Topeka before you move there. So I wanted to check these things out, and make sure that you knew about what they were, Frank. You, you I know you... all. I know everything there is to know about Topeka. Oh well, let's just because test... you because you talk about it all the time. Good. Well, you pay attention and you watch the show. Good for you. Um, okay, so we're gonna test this out. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. The very first thing. This is a a, a web show or a website, Movado. M O V O T O. That's the uh, 21 things you need to know about Topeka if you want to follow along or share with your friends online. Uh, number one, and this is no uh, secret why downtown uh, shared this here. Downtown is getting a makeover. Uh, that's obviously something that's happening, and it's very cool. Uh, that's. A lot of people have talked about how it's important that if we want to be a community that retains and retracts, or retains them and attracts, not retracts, the millennials, uh, we need to have a vibrant urban area where they can live without a car, really, necessarily. So that downtown area, uh, we're really excited about everything that's happening. If you haven't been down here in a while, you should come and check it out because there are so many wonderful things happening. Some really great businesses have relocated here, and it's very exciting to be here. And sometimes you'll see Frank. Sorry about that. Hey, I'm I'm down here all the time now. <laughs> of course. And, and sometimes you'll see Chris too. Sometimes. Sorry about yeah. that. Sorry about that. Good. All right. Uh, the number two uh, event, or the number thing that's happening, Topeka people are happy officially. It says, last year, more than 800 citizens volunteered to get the city's parks ready for the spring. In 2012, the city was named ninth in Gallup's list of the top small communities for well-being in the country, based on factors like emotional health and work environment. So if you're looking for your new happy place, this is probably it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it Isn't sure it? is. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, and, you know, if you're not happy here, well, try going somewhere else, see what that's like, and then come back, and you'll probably have a new understanding. A lot of people do that. You know quite a few of them. Now, right? I, have all the, now I have that song in my, in my mind. Want to clap your hands if you're happy? Oh, yeah. If you're happy and you know it, clap no, your no, hands. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, the, the happy Pharrell here. song. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, one, that one, yeah. Okay, good. Well, Good, they should have shot that in Topeka then. <laughs> uh, number three, religious history was made right here. Uh, Topeka is an area with heavy religious influence, obviously referred to, or often referred to, as the home of Pentecostalism. It also is the home of the popular Reverend Charles Sheldon, who wrote the book In His Steps and first posed the question that became synonymous with rubber bracelet wearing evangelical Christians everywhere. What would Jesus do? The WWJD phenomenon sparked from Sermon Sheldon's at the Central Congregational Church. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah well, I, I had no idea. I had no idea that, that all that was here. Well, so and I'm you know, something new today. Uh, Phil Grecian, our good buddy, who uh, you know, writer here, uh, in his steps is something that's really um, it's one of his pride and joy pieces. So it's pretty cool. Give a shout out to Phil Grecian. Uh, the number four. Okay, now a lot of people remember this. Google renamed itself to Topeka for a day, which was pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there we go. That's it. Uh, in an attempt to become the chosen city for Google's experimental fiber, fiber for community program, uh, which staged to bring internet speeds 1,000 times faster than anywhere else, Topeka temporarily renamed the city Google Kansas. A few weeks later, in response, Google changed its popular and ever-changing Google lettering to Breed Topeka. That was on April Fool's Day, of course. Uh, yes, it was. And, but people really thought something was wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they really did think something was wrong. They did. Uh, they, they, well, not necessarily wrong. There were people that were like, huh? And, uh, you know, Google has a, a history of putting out the, you know, interesting uh, 
April Fool's Day prank. So you should check the that out. Shenanigans. They do play a little yeah, shenanigans. They have fun there. Yeah, they fun I guess there. they do. I know a couple of people that work on their uh, their on their campus. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, okay, let's go to the number five thing. Don't believe the crime hype. All right. Uh, as with any city, Topeka has its share of crime, which was so bad at one point in the 90s, it was breaking violent crime records year after year. But while crime rates in most cities have increased since 2000, Topeka has continuously gone down with as much as an 18% drop in crime from 2007 to 2008. So, yeah. All right. That's... That's pretty good. We get to talk a lot about the uh, crime statistics at the Safe Streets Coalition meetings uh, the first Wednesday of the month at the Great Overland Station over lunch. Um, we have a law enforcement talking about that. So it really is kind of interesting to see the crime stats, you know, what's reported and where and what the crime is. So that's kind of interesting stuff. If you're interested in keeping up with that, check out the Safe Streets Coalition meeting. Yeah, well, we have a downtown uh, retailers meeting every month, mm -hmm. and we always have a uh, police officer that gives us like an update on burglaries and if we, there's things that we need to take, you know, make sure we're that's right. Sh you know, looking they do they do have a pretty and, good uh, tie in there. Yeah, people, and so. what we what we try to do is you know make sure that all the businesses know, hey, this person is shoplifted, or you know maybe this person caused a fight or something like that. And so they keep us really in the loop, and it's amazing how well they do. And it brings they do that with a lot of a lot of agencies and around the city, and uh, you know different. The you know, the law enforcement does meet with a lot of those merchants associations. It's a pretty good way of you know preventing crime and by getting the people to actually speak together. That's pretty cool as well. So uh, we're going to take a real quick break. We'll come back with more. We have plenty more on the list. Don't go away.